Acts chapter 19. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm going to share something with you that I feel like the Lord laid heavy on my heart for today. And uh, I'm just, uh, just believing for God to do something great in our midst today. Amen. Um, and I, I know that he has a word for you. How many of you are thankful for your church? You thankful? And what that means is that you're thankful for the person that sits on your left. You're thankful for the person that sits on your right. You're thankful for the one behind you and the one in front of you. Because the church is the people. Amen. And we're going to need each other more than we've ever needed each other before as we see the day of the Lord approaching. Amen. We're going to need each other. We're going to need each other. We are living in some pretty tough times. And a lot of what's going on in the world is, is a lot. There's a lot of persecution against the church and the Christian church, especially because we are we go by the name of Jesus. Amen. And we're identified by his name. And, and the reason we catch such trouble is because the enemy is intimidated by the name of Jesus because there is no other name under heaven where men can be saved but by the name of Jesus. You know, the enemy knows scripture too. The enemy knows John chapter 14 verse 6. He knows that, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except it be by him. So he's intimidated. And so we're, there's a lot of things going on. A lot of our brothers and sisters in foreign countries and now we're seeing a lot of persecution in our country I've been reading a lot recently that a lot of brothers and sisters in Nigeria have lost their lives for the gospel's sake because they love Jesus and honor the Lord. A lot of people are having to meet in secret today in China and other places because they cannot meet openly like we do and we take this for granted. But, but they tell me that more than 20,000 people a day are being born again in China. Isn't that awesome? God is doing something across the world and I'm thankful for it. But there's, there's just a lot that's, that's going on. In Acts chapter 19, I'm going to share, that's where we're going today. But before I do, I want to talk to you for just a few moments today. I've titled the sermon, Much Encouragement. Not a little encouragement, but much encouragement. Somebody say, much encouragement. I remember our former worship pastor, Mike Mallory, whenever he got ready to leave or go somewhere, he'd always say, much love. Much love, much love to the Turners, that kind of thing. And I'm thankful because I don't want a little love. I want a lot of love. Amen? I want much love, don't you? I want to be loved much by the people around me. I want to be loved by the people in our church. And, and you want to be loved. And we want to give out much love. In the book of Acts, the whole book, we talk about the book of Acts a lot in our church because we feel like that we're the 29th chapter. There's only 28 chapters in the book, but we feel like we're a continuation of that. Amen? And that's what we are. But in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 11, Acts chapter 14, Acts chapter 15, Acts chapter 20, the book of Acts speaks of the early church encouraging one another. They did a lot of encouraging because they found themselves in the situation, a lot of situations like they are in Acts chapter 19. In chapter 19 and chapter 20, we shared, I shared, I think, some from uh, 19 a few weeks ago, but in these passages of Scripture, what, what has happened is Paul is preaching the gospel. And the followers of Paul, those that are with him, are preaching the gospel of Jesus. And people are being saved by the hundreds and even thousands. And they're turning away from pagan religions and they're turning to Jesus. And as believers, we feel like, wow, that's awesome. There's something wonderful and something great that's happening there. But the Bible says that in the midst of all that was going on and all the preaching of the gospel and all the, the people turning their hearts to God, the Bible said confusion came about the area as Paul and, and, and the other believers are preaching Jesus to the, to, in Ephesus as they're preaching 
about salvation in Ephesus, there's this confusion that comes. And the confusion is a result of the fact that as Paul begins to preach, and the Bible says that all these people come to know the Lord, and all throughout Asia, people are coming to God. There is this pagan religion there, and I, I shared some, I think a couple of weeks ago, this pagan religion, and it's, there is this goddess Diana that is worshipped there. And, there, and they have uh, 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 thousands of them are, are worshiping. There. And, but as salvation is being given, they turn from this. And there is a man in the, in the area by the name of Demetrius. The Bible says that Demetrius is a silversmith. And he was responsible for making silver shrines of the goddess Diana. Now, here's the whole problem. He had all of these partnerships with a lot of craftsmen. And I want to borrow, I want to borrow a modern term, and I want to say that what they were doing was manufacturing all of these silver images of the goddess Diana. And it was making them a whole lot of money. You can imagine that Paul comes to, comes to town and starts preaching Jesus and people start turning away from the worship of Diana and start uh, worshiping the one true and living God. And so it makes all of these people that are making all of this money mad. And the Bible said there is confusion that begins to sweep. And where we pick up today is in Acts chapter 19. In these two chapters, I'm going to read three verses I'm going to read first Acts chapter 19, verse 40. The Bible says, For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's, watch this word, for this day's uproar. There was an uproar that had come because Paul has got stuff stirred up because all these people are leaving their silver images of Diana and, and starting to worship God. The Bible said, there's, the question was for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. Then it goes, then we go into chapter 20. In verse 1, this word is used again. I want you to notice this is the second time it's used. And after the uproar was ceased, this is what I want you to notice. After the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples. And Paul did what? What did he do? Paul embraced them. Paul called the disciples together. And what did he do? He hugged them. Reach over there and put a hug on somebody next to you right quick. It's all right to hug in church. Amen? Just keep it holy. Keep it holy. Amen? So Paul calls them together. And the Bible said he embraces them. And departed for to go into Macedonia. Now look at this next verse. And when he had gone over those parts, and watch this now, this is where we get our, the, the title for our lesson today, and had given them much. Everybody say much. Not a little much. Had given them much exhortation. He came into Greece. You got to understand what's going on. There's been an uproar. There's been a lot of confusion. You can imagine the level of persecution against the church of the living God. And these guys, they're, they're just, they're hurting. These guys are going through trouble. You know what they need? They need to be embraced. Paul realized that these guys needed a hug. So Paul embraced them. And then the Bible says before he leaves them, he gives them much exhortation. Somebody say exhortation. He gives them much ex exhortation. Now here's where we want to do a little lesson real quick like. We're going to do a, we're, we're going to do a study on that word exhortation. M most of the time when you see any word, whether it be in the New Testament, most New Testament words of course would be uh, written originally in Greek. And most Old Testament words, Old Testament scripture was written originally in Hebrew. When you look at most words in the New Testament, they would normally be derived. There are others other than this, but most words are derived normally from one Greek word. But this particular word, exhortation, is derived from two Greek words. It's derived from two different Greek words, and 
it, it, the, the two words are this. The first word is the Greek word logos. Logos literally means, it just it simply means a spoken, the spoken word. And the second word it's derived from is the word, the Greek word parakleo, which means to comfort or to encourage. So really what the word means when you put the two words together, it means to encourage someone with a spoken word, to encourage someone with a word. You know, your words have power. Y'all help me, remind me of where I was. I'm going to stop here just a second. Do y'all know that your words have power? Do you understand that the, the power of life and death, according to Proverbs 18, 21, is in the power of your tongue? What you say or don't say? You have to, or, or it, it's, it's, it, it's important that you understand, or, or what you say, I should, what, it, it's important that you understand that you can speak life to situation of death. You see, because you, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead is now in our mortal bodies. You know, the Bible said that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And we actually, we actually, as children of God, and because the Holy Spirit is in us, our words can create things. We can create, we can, we can use the words to, 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 to create a negative atmosphere around us, or we can create a positive kind of vibe around us, as they say today. You know, that, that word vibe is how you say it now. Vibe. That sounds pretty cool, don't it? Vibe. So you can use your words to create a negative vibe or a positive vibe because your words have created power. You can be negative. Or you can be positive. The Greek, here's the two Greek words. Logos, the spoken word. Parakleo means to comfort or encourage. So it is to comfort people with what you say, the people around you. Now here's what's even more significant. is that the word parakleo is a Greek word closely related to the word Greek word parakletos from which the word comforter in John 14, 15, and 16 is derived, parakletos. And we know that the comforter referred to in John is the Holy Ghost. How do we know that? Watch this, John 14, 26. Look what it says right here. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, watch what it says he'll do. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Oh, get this. The word exhortation is logos to speak a word, paracleo of comfort, but we are empowered to paracleo by the paracletos. You get that? By the comforter, by the Holy Spirit. You see, we run around in the church talking about being anointed. What are we anointed to do? Somebody said, well, we're anointed to pray for the sick. That's all, that's right. We're anointed and cast out devils. That's right. He gives us that authority. We're anointed to do that. We're anointed. But this is what I found out, and this is what I want to, I, I don't understand. I don't understand how the church has all of these, this anointing to help people outside, but we don't have grace for each other inside. The Bible says that our first attention should be given, according to God's word, to the household of faith. It's amazing how we have grace for everybody outside, but we don't have grace for each other inside. It's amazing how we can walk, we go to church together, and we can, we can speak to our neighbors, but we can't speak to each other in church. 
We come to the house of God and we go to church with people we've never introduced ourselves to. It was, it was this quiet in first service too. Look at this building. It's full from side to side. You know what happens most of the time? We are creatures of habit. And we have, we come into the house of God the same way and leave the same way. Come in the same doors. We get out of our car, park in the same areas most of the time. If we can find that same parking spot, that same area, get out of the car, walk in that same door inside the church, come over to the same door that we walk in, sit in the same section we always sit in, sit in to the same people we always sit in, go back out that same door, back out there to the car. Hundreds of people are going out here. We never know who they are. I believe what God wants us to do in these last days. And I'm going to show you in just a minute. I believe what God wants us to do in these last days. We got to mix it up some, y'all. Maybe some, maybe on purpose some of these weeks we are to just come in the opposite side of the church. Sit on the opposite side of the building. Come to know another brother or another sister in the Lord because your prayer partner might be sitting on the other side of the building. Your prayer group might be on this side of the building. Because life is better together. We are better together. We're meant. The ch- Let me tell you something about fellowship. Let me tell you something about community. The church is, is supposed to be a community of believers. Every time you see the word church in the New Testament, every single time in the New Testament, it's from, the one, it's from one Greek word, and it's the Greek word ecclesia. And it means the called out ones. It's it's the church, people who are called by the name of Christ, who gather together. You need to have a gathering, an assembly of yourself together with other believers. Here's how important it was. The early church, the Bible said they went from house to house, breaking bread. What does that mean? They ate with each other. Boy, you know it's a bad day when you can't get no response from a church in the south about eating. <laughs> they ate together. What makes a good home prayer meeting? Banana pudding. <laughs> Hello? That's what the Bible said. They went from how, they, watch, watch this now. Watch how, and, and how they put it together. Watch what it says. The scripture says, they went in Acts 2, you can read it when you get home. They went from house to house in, in prayers, in breaking of bread, and they continued steadfastly, it says, in prayers, in breaking bread, in, in, in the apostles' doctrine, in the word, but also in fellowship. It puts fellowship in the saints and it's with doctrine. What does that mean? That means that we, that assembling ourselves together and having a community of believers is not optional. What are you going to you what are you going to do? You going to get legalistic on us, Pastor? No, I'm not going to get legalistic on you. I'm telling you, you need a body of believers. You need each other. The early church, that's what was happening here. They had gone through an uproar, confusion. Paul realized the need to encourage them. The early church was constantly gathering together, and it wasn't just for prayer. It wasn't just to study the Word. It was for fellowship and encouragement of each other. There are people around you today that need a Holy Ghost neck hug. Y'all know what a neck hug is? I can't help, I'm country, amen. That's just all it is to it. You've got, some folks need a big old hug. I shared with the first service today, there is a beautiful little brown-haired, brown-eyed little girl named Amelia that attends the first service. Every week she comes in with her family and she sits in big church. And Amelia is probably... I'm going to say she's about three or four. And after every single service, she makes her mom and dad bring her to me because she wants to hug me. I want to go to Pastor Bo. 
But this is what she does. And see, Melissa and I, we hadn't had nothing but them old boys. You know what I mean? And I love them, and I love to hug them too. I love them. And I always loved to help them hugging me when they were babies. But we didn't know what it was like to have a little girl. So that little girl has just stole my heart. She comes after every service. So she gives me a big old hug. But when she gets through, she has her mama, her daddy, and her papa and her nana standing around. So she hugs me big, and then she pulls on them. It's your turn. And she makes all four of them hug me before they leave. So I got, I, got this, I got these hugs to look forward to after every service. You know what I'm saying? But I, you know what I found out? I found out I look forward to those. I need those. We need those. We need the encouragement. See, this is what I want you to understand. You have been anointed by God to logos, to speak a word of paracleo, of encouragement. And the anointing has come from the parakletos, the one who will teach you how to encourage the people around you. We need each other. been anointed to do it so it's simple if you're anointed by the Holy Ghost or the Paracletos the one who encourages then you're going to Paracleto you're going to encourage here's what I want you to get in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 you know it but I want it to, I want to use it in this context today let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do. But watch this. But encourage one another, especially now that the day, notice this, of his return is drawing near. Don't neglect the assembling of yourself together. Don't neglect your community, the community of believers. And especially so as we are coming to the end. And, and look what it says. It says that we are to encourage each other. There that word is again. We are to encourage each other. And especially now as we see the day of the Lord approaching us. So it's more important now than ever before. Now here's why. The Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, and you know the verse, but I want you to listen to it from the Amplified. In 2 Timothy 3.1, he said, but understand this, that in the last days, dangerous times, dangerous times of great stress and trouble will come. Difficult days that will be hard. Watch this now. Hard to bear. Once again, I want to remind you, you don't know what the person next to you has been going through this week. You don't know what the person behind you has just gone through. You don't know what someone might, you don't know what a doctor may have just given, what kind of doctor's report somebody on your row might have gotten this week. You don't know what, what they might be facing with a child. or you don't, you don't know what kind of addiction that they're trying to overcome. You don't know that there may be somebody on your road that has been suffering from great depression recently and they've got a high level of anxiety right now. You don't know who is sitting behind you or in front of you. You don't know. And let me tell you something. What you do in their life sometimes is even more important than the pastor can do in their life because I can't make it around to everybody today but if they could find about five or six other believers in this house uh, that could give them a word fitly spoken it would be like apples of gold in settings of silver I'm trying to find somebody in this room today that you realize that God has anointed you and given you a logos word uh, to paracleo to encourage somebody with that word from the Lord how many of you feel like you got a word from God that could be helpful to somebody around you today give God praise and glory if you feel that way see I want to I want to tell you something um, 
I'm, 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 I'm feeling more and more like we need to have more small groups in our church. Community. I just, I, I believe that. We've done some in the past, but I, I'm just praying God just help us do it. Just help us form some of these groups that people can form together and not just because, you know, it's a, it is a big room. It's hard to get to everybody in here. And this is a second service. There was a lot more in that one even. And it's just, you know, there's a lot of people that attend this church. And it's important that we're, that we're together. So I'm, I'm, I, want, I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you to get connected with other, other people in this church. I want to encourage you to be a part of some kind of fellowship, some kind of small group. And if you don't see anything that interests you and you have an interest in something, approach us and you start one. Huh? You like to exercise? You like to walk, run? Get together with some other believers that like to walk and run. Start a, I don't know, Faith walk. You know what I mean? I don't, I mean, that's kind of silly, but anyway, you, you can come up with better than that. But I'm just throwing it off the top of my head. But, but, but you know what I'm saying? But we have groups already in our church that you could be a part of. We got a Monday night Bible study that just started back for, for ladies. And we're encouraging the ladies to come out on Monday nights. And then they study the Word of God together, and then they've got it plan to where they can break up into smaller groups and if they want to pray about certain things and those kind of things, you can do that. Join that. You know, we've got a men's fellowship that meets uh, two Sunday nights a month that you can be a part of. Whatever it might be, we need to be together. What's the, what, what does the scripture say? The more. For the purpose of what? Encouraging each other. Now, here's the reason why. Let me tell you why. You tell me if I got it right. Everybody look at me. Everybody look right here for just a second. You tell me if I got it right. Hadn't it been awesome today? Have you, have you, do you, I'm going to tell y'all, I'm, I'm not telling you this, this story. My favorite day of the week is Sunday. I love Sunday. And part of me living Sunday is I just love being here around God's people. I just love it. How many, do you feel the same way about Sunday? Sunday's just, how many of you feel encouraged on Sunday? And Sunday good. You know, there's something about coming in here in the worship team and, man, people just around you just shouting the name of Jesus and clapping their hands and the worship team. That's what it's designed. It's supposed to be like that. We're supposed to have liberty in our worship. And we come in here and, and all the stuff that troubled us, it seems like it, the, it just for, for about an hour or so, it just kind of vanishes. And you're just going to, I hear people say, well, you know what? I wish I could live at the church. You know, I just, you know, it's just, it's just that, it's that kind of thing. But you tell me if I'm not tell, if, if, if I'm being real about it, by about Tuesday, day come on let's be real about about tuesday <laughs> man life has just hit us hard we went back to work with that boss that and he's a hellion oh lord help him jesus you pray for him you don't talk about him pray for him now y'all i didn't mean that in a negative manner I'm be positive be positive but you know what I'm saying? And, and you go and, and all of the, everything just comes on, in on you and you go to the mailbox and the bills are still arriving and the ch children are still screaming, come on somebody. And you still got to go to work and you still got to drive through traffic and you still got to go by the grocery store and somebody just cut you off trying to go in your parking spot. And you still got, you got all these things going on and you're still trying to figure things out that you got going on physically and you're still trying to figure out some things that you got going on mentally and you still got all this negative stuff that shows up on your, your phone and you still got got the negative stuff that shows up on the television and you still got all this stuff going on in the real world around you and about Tuesday or Wednesday you're going oh my lord where is the church where's the church that's why you have to have a community that's why you have to have a community that you can pick up the telephone and call them you have to have a community that you meet together at the, at the coffee shop and pray together and do coffee together or meet together and break some bread eat some banana pudding Fried chicken, trying to be good, eat grilled chicken, you know, whatever. 
But you have to, we have to have this. Not, what's the word? Not the less. The scripture says the more. Why? Because we're living in those dangerous times. Because we're living in those hard times. Because we're living, and, a, and, and let me go ahead and tell you, look, it's the persecution that's come in the world today is on the Christian church. We're, I mean, let's be honest about it. We face it in school. Our kids are going to, to colleges and they have secular professors there that are challenging them about their faith. They feel like an outcast. That's why it's so important. That's why you hear me say all the time, when the early church got in trouble after chapter 2 and chapter 3 in Acts, in chapter 4, the Bible says they went and found their own company. They had to get around other believers. And what was the purpose of getting around the other believers? The purpose was so that those other believers could logos, a paracleo. They could speak a paracleo, an encouraging word under the anointing of the paracletos. The Holy Spirit has anointed you to be a help to your brother and your sister. God wants us in this season of our church. Let me go and look. I want you to look around you today, y'all. The enemy tried to shut the church down. Hello. But look what the Lord has done. And look where we are. But you know where we are as a church, as this body of believers? We're at this place that if this church is going to continue to be what God's called it to be, we're going to have to have this anointing come on us to encourage each other, to fellowship with each other, to break bread with each other, to pray with each other, to study the word of God with each other, to do life together. Because I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, it's coming to the day where the Bible, when the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, you remember what Paul said? Paul, he talks about where you have to come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Now see, us Pentecostals and holiness people, had it. Long, we had it wrong for so long. We took all of that to be our outward appearance that we were going to look different and that's why we didn't know it. it listen God doesn't work from the outside in he works from the inside out and sometimes he don't work from the out, inside out the way you thought he should have worked from the inside out because some of the stuff that we thought he was work should have worked out on the outside he didn't really care about to start with hello But it's important. Paul said, he said, come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. We're going to be, listen, in this last days, y'all, we're going to be a peculiar people. We're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. We're, going to, we're not going to act like everybody else acts. We're not going to talk like everybody else talks. We're going, you're going to find out the more we get, the closer we get to the coming of Jesus, the more you're going to need a community of believers to hang out with because everybody else is this is other they got a totally different ideal about things they don't love Jesus like you love Jesus and let me tell you something I, this is what I found out if you love Jesus anybody that loves fishing you know what they want to talk about